For generations, commercial fishermen have been corralling giant bluefin tuna in their nets off the south shore of Nova Scotia. But it was not until 1935 when big game angler and sportsman Michael Lerner hooked tuna by rod and reel on Soldier's Rip off Wedgeport that the rip flashed into fame as the world's finest giant bluefin battleground. Then, from countries all over the world, big game anglers came hustling to Wedgeport to try for the world's biggest tuna and to compete in the International Tuna Cup match. From Mexico, Cuba, Chile, Peru. From Brazil, Venezuela, and the Argentine. From the United States and the British Commonwealth. From Spain, Germany, and France. From Scandinavia and the Netherlands. Anglers, observers, and press have come over the years to Nova Scotia in September for this international classic, the Tuna Cup Match. Since the match's inception in 1937, the Grand Hotel at Yarmouth has been headquarters for match executives, committee members, and press. Located in resort areas around the town or at Wedgeport, teams are made to feel at home. Each country is represented by a team of not less than three and not more than seven men. The British Commonwealth team may include anglers from as far away as Australia or as close as Yarmouth itself. Tuna Wharf activities set the tempo of the match. Here, Waymaster Israel Putzier keeps track of each day's weighty catch. Here, too, from the tuna cup that each team hopes to carry home, the captains draw for the boats they will use during the tourney. The much-coveted Alton B. Sharp Trophy is the prize held by each winning team for one year. Before the match, there's the now traditional clam and lobster bake. It's the Crandall party for visiting teams and press. The finest seafood, clams and lobsters, steamed in their own salty brew, whet all appetites, and a feeling of good fellowship pervades even the atmosphere and bubbles over to make the Crandall clam and lobster bake an event to remember. Long before the light of day, team, judges, and press boats leave Tuna Wharf. It's an hour's run out to Soldier's Rip, where fishing usually starts at 7 a.m. sharp and continues till 4 in the afternoon. During this time, each boat captain and his two guides work as one. In fact, these Acadian French fishermen guides seem almost a part of the boat itself in their smooth handling of each operation. The line used in the match must not test more than 130 pounds, but the angler may use his favorite rod and reel. Each boat has two lines out, but only one angler may fish at one time. So by prearrangement, they take turns in the angler's chair. The rip is a six knot tidal stream about one mile wide to the seaward of the Tuscan Islands. In fishing position, the boats face into the tidal stream, and with motors running at the speed of the current, the lines and the bait are kept properly placed.
The rep and nearby area have long been favorite feeding grounds for schools of herring and mackerel, followed by the tuna, which feed and grow mightily on them. Relatively little is known, even now, about the habits of the tuna. Why sometimes they will feed avidly, and other times bypass the bait altogether. When this happens, anglers vie with each other to find new and acceptable ways to outwit the tuna, even to the extent of using a kite to manipulate the bait over the surface of the water. Tuna are wonderful travelers, covering thousands of miles in their wide Atlantic home. Like other living things, they have cycles of abundance and scarcity. But one thing we do know, although they are found in other waters, they come biggest off the shores of Nova Scotia, apparently because they stop to feed. Always within sight of the teams, or within hearing via walkie-talkie, is a committee boat identified by its particular flag. And look, isn't that boat on the tuna now? It's Nell of the British Commonwealth team. Word flashes from committee to press boats, and they close in to see and report the battle. What brings men thousands of miles for such a match? Is it just the thrill of boating a giant Nova Scotia tuna that brought Dr. Nell all the way from South Africa, Max Borrell from Spain, or Caleb White from Venezuela? The bluefin may be the common denominator that brings men from all walks of life to match their angling skills. But more than that is their love of good sportsmanship and the friendliness and international goodwill that is so much the mark of the world tuna match. Look, look, the tuna are really striking now. It's the Argentine boat this time, and Harry Smith has his tuna tiring fast. At first strike, tuna can travel for miles, and the boat must follow to prevent losing too much line. He's pumping the line up and down in an attempt to haul the bluefin close enough to gap. There, he did it, and the tuna is alongside. A quarter of a ton or more of tuna is a dead weight and a tough haul, but it's another score that adds excitement to the day. De La Torre of the Mexican team is the lucky angler this time, and there's much excitement on the rip. Team points are scored on the basis of one point per pound of fish taken, with bonus points going to the team taking the largest number of fish, as well as the largest single fish, each day of the tourney. And points also go to the team taking the largest number of fish and the largest single fish during the entire match. So each fish boated tips the scales in enough different ways to keep interest high. With flags gaily flying, the teams turn homeward. Nine hours on the water for any three successive days can seem very long or very short, depending always on whether or not the temperamental bluefin have been in a striking mood. But either way, the warm welcome of excited well-wishers as the boats crowd into the jetty at Tuna Wharf is a heartening sight. Everyone is anxious to see just how each giant fish tips the scales in favor of one team or another. Wedgeport visitors have seen tuna weighing more than 900 pounds winched up to the tuna wharf for all to see. Will this year see a record-breaking bluefin? The largest fish taken in any match weighed 871 pounds. The greatest number of tuna taken in any match was 72. The greatest number of tuna taken in by any one team was 19. And only once in 15 matches did the tuna stay strictly away. Yes, since 1935, there have been 15 International Tuna Cup matches, sparked by the greatest names in big game fishing all over the world. No wonder. The magnificent bluefin tuna has brought fishing fame to Nova Scotia. The world's record, 977 pounds, was boated by Commander Hodgson at St. Anne's Bay. 
and for the world's leading anglers, the International Tuna Cup match in Nova Scotia with its Alton B. Sharp Trophy is an event well worth traveling half the world to win. <laughs>